I start having a conversation with myself. So in context here, right now I'm looking at the lens. I'm going to pick on Rob. Rob, from your perspective, it almost feels like I'm speaking directly to you, doesn't it? Give me, you're muted. Okay. So if I was saying, hey, Rob, how are you enjoying this so far? I'm looking at me now. I'm not looking at Rob. And he's going to think I'm a crazy person. So I've lost that engagement. So let's go over these again. Horizontal, eye level, look into the lens, big smile, because you don't want to look like the person that caught a bouquet at the funeral. Remember, it's all about giving energy. And part of what happens on camera, let's see if I, if I did an energy meter of, let's say, uh, zero to five. Zero means they should be putting flowers on top of you. Five is you've just won a million bucks. For some reason, the camera amps down that energy level. So you actually have to crank it up and be a bit more um, animated than you usually would be for it to come across as normal. I know it sounds weird, but when you practice it, you'll see what I mean. So simple basics, again, horizontal, eye level, look into the lens, big smile, and then pretend that you're speaking to one person. Now, the whole idea of video is we want millions, millions of people to watch our videos, but I can't speak to millions of people. If I can focus on that one person, and this comes back to a marketing perspective, when you're doing the video, who is your audience? Now, it may be a video email, and I'm sending it to uh, Bob Muir there. So if it's to Bob, I know uh, Bob is potentially a client. We met for a coffee, and now I'm going to do a quick follow-up. Hey, Bob, awesome meeting you for coffee today. When you told me you're looking for that horse ranch in Caledon, I know exactly what you mean because I've got horses too. It will be the bane of my existence to find you that perfect home. So now I'm communicating directly to Bob. But if I'm doing something for it, maybe it's first time buyers, then it's going to be different. But I'm still in my mind going to pretend I'm speaking to one person. Now, some people I know, I don't have a post-it note here, are really camera shy. And they forget to look at the lens. That little thing here on a phone is a lens. Now, you can get a, a posty, a little, you know, posty note, put a happy face on it, stick that right to the lens here, and you can look at that little happy face. That will take the intimidation out of doing the video. Okay, so those tips, do those. And last but not least, get in the habit of, you see these things here, the lenses? And you've got one here too. For whatever reason, when I have my phone in my pocket, and when I take it out, my thumb automatically gravitates to the lens. And over a period of time, what's gonna happen is all the oil, skin oil from your hands is going to accumulate over top of the lens. And it's not a camera technique when it looks really foggy like it's a London morning. Uh, no, that's not good. Get in the habit of getting a, li a, a, li a rag here, soft cloth. You wanna make sure you wipe down those lenses and also here at the top, okay? So if you do those things, those simple things right now will set you ahead of probably 90% of realtors out there right now because they're fumbling around. They don't know what to do. So let's do a little pause. Questions so far. Rob, we got anything coming you, up? You, you, are you using a separate camera or are you using your uh, computer camera? For what I'm doing right now, Rob? Yes. So right now, um, I'm using a Logitech C920. Uh, it's a webcam that's mounted right on top of my computer screen. And then I'm also here in camera, you can see I'm using a USB mic because what happens if I use the built-in mic, which is okay, it's okay. This gives me that deeper, richer from the diaphragm, almost like you're listening to FM radio. And I do a lot of tutorials where I'm recording videos. So you might not necessarily see me, but you're hearing my voice. So one of the things about video is people don't realize this, about 70% of a good video is the audio. So if they're straining because there's car noise happening in the background or distractions or it's really tinny, people will disengage within the first five to seven seconds. So even though you shot what you think is a masterpiece, that's two minutes, five minutes, maybe it's gone with the wind, it's two hours long, they're not going to watch it between two, uh, sorry, five to seven seconds if they have to strain to listen to it. So in my case, I've got a webcam and I've also got a USB microphone plugged in. Okay. Thank so you. speaking of microphones, let's talk about some of the little bits and pieces now, let me stop for a second. Michael, I have a face for radio. Good for you. Here's what I hear all the time. I'm too fat, too ugly, too white, too hairy. Anything with a two out front of it so I can't do video. And my answer is, yes, you are. Now that we've got that off the table, own it, get over it, move on. Own it, get over it, move on. Because here's what we do as an industry. And if I asked you right now how many people have a business card with your picture on it, you'd 
hands would all probably go up. And I won't pick on anybody. Uh, Bob says no because he's wanted by the FBI. He's in with protection. He has his picture nowhere. Maybe on post office walls and shoppers drug mart. So let's say Ed. I look at Ed's business card and I'm thinking, glorious picture when he was in high school. Awesome. But it, Ed's put on a bit of gray over the years. And this is the mistake that we make. Photoshop. Photoshop is our, our next best friend. Women, you do this too. They'll airbrush things out. They make themselves all look nice and pretty. And then over the years, you use that same picture. And you have it on your fridge magnets, calendars, business, anything that you have, all your propaganda that you're sending out. And the idea is one day, someone will respond to your marketing, right place, right time, and they're going to call you. And they're going to say, hey, Rob Roland, will you come over and list my house? And Rob goes over there, all excited, shows up, knocks on the door. The guy opens the door. Rob gives him the card. The guy's looking at the card. He's looking at the stack of propaganda that he's got on the floor. He's looking at the card, looking at Rob. And in his mind, he's dialing 911 to report a missing realtor. Because what he's expecting didn't show up. And this is important. There has to be a continuity between your marketing and what actually shows up. Because there's something I call the trifecta. No like and trust and when people watch your videos what's happening in the background the other than conscious brain is they're making this decision instantly are you somebody that they can know like and trust because it's not watching video get that word out of your head for a moment it's not video as far as they're concerned even though this is a phone that they're watching the video on in their mind they're actually watching tv because our brains can't differentiate between this little teeny screen here a laptop, a tablet, or my big screen here, or the 4K screen that you've got in your living room. It's still TV. And there's all these psychological things that are playing in that person's mind in the background while they're watching your video, your movie. So if you can just be authentic and decide, okay, what's the message that I've got? But before the messages, who's my audience? Who am I speaking to? What is it that I want these people to do as a result of listening to my message? What's the call to action at the end of this? So if I've delivered really good content, maybe it's for first time buyers. Obviously I want them to do something at the end, which is, hey, go to my website, download a special report, pick up on the phone and call me. Let me give you a real life example. Um, in the, the background here, uh, Rob knows that I, I live in a train station. It's a 150 year old train station. And we've been doing renovations here for the past three years. Uh, two years ago, we were like neck deep into the renos and we couldn't live here on the main floor. It started off as a shower head replacement, turned into a full main floor gut. Uh, you guys know the drill here. So I went out and I bought a used trailer. Uh, it's called a fifth wheel. And uh, they hauled it here, they dropped it in my backyard and that became home. It was really cool, it was like a condo. And for the first week or so, it was just glorious, you know, showers, breakfast, it was great. But then on the wall, Beside the door, there's this little panel of lights. And then one morning, the lights started flashing. And it kind of reminded me, and maybe Rob, you'll appreciate this, Bob, too, or all of that same elk in terms of years. Remember the old science fiction shows like Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, uh, Lost in Space? Whenever something went wrong, the lights would go off and fireworks would start to fly. So I went up to this panel, and what I discovered was that the panel warns me that they call them holding tanks. So every time you flush a toilet, it's got to go somewhere. Well, it goes into a holding tank. Every time you use a sink, it goes into a different tank. It's called gray water. And the, your toilet byproducts is called black water. So you have to drain those. And I'm thinking, I, I, I know nothing about this. What do I do? So like any average male, I get onto my phone and I go to YouTube and I type in the exact uh, model that I've got. So titanium fifth wheel the year, how to drain holding tank. And then a bunch of YouTube videos came up. I thought, okay, cool. So I watched the first one and this guy starts hooking up the pipes and it didn't end well because he got covered in everything that I didn't want to get covered in. The next video, this guy meticulously laid out every piece of pipe on the ground, told me exactly what each piece did, and then systematically took one, put it together, to put it together and walk through the entire process of emptying out the holding tank on his trailer. So I did exactly the same thing. I went out, got the exact pipes that he recommended, drain valves and everything, put it all together. The magic moment was pulling the handle and then I hear the gurgling and everything going away. And in Michael's world, everything is cool. 
if that guy were to show up right now and knock on the door or at that time, I would have probably kissed him on the lips because I had a problem. He solved that problem. And here's where reciprocity kicks in because he solved a problem I had. I now am hotwired as a species. This is the way we're hotwired. I want to return that kindness. What is it that I can do? Because it's almost like an exchange. He gave me something of value. I want to now reciprocate that value. So taking this back into real estate, if you're solving somebody's problem, let's say, um, Rob, maybe you're selling vacation, let's not say vacation properties, let's say recreational properties in Halliburton or something. 10 things you need to know about buying a vacation property or a cottage property. When I bought the train station, I didn't know anything about well and septic. I do now. When we bought the train station, I didn't know anything about electrical panels. I do now. It's not because my realtor took time to explain. It's not because this shoddy home inspector took time to explain. It's because the first month in here, the well went. I had to replace the pump. When we started inspecting the fuse panels, took off the old knob uh, fuses right behind. Some of them were pennies. The home inspector didn't catch that. So we redid the whole panel. These are things that I should have known. These are things that my realtor should have told me, but didn't. So let's go back a step here. As you start creating content, one of the questions is, well, Michael, okay, I've mastered doing what you said. I'm holding it horizontally. I'm looking at the lens, big smile. I'm talking to the lens. Okay, now what do I say? What do I do? So here's a little tip. This thing's called the information sandwich, the information sandwich. And you always want to start off by giving your name your company and your website. So I'll say, I'll, I'll make something up. Hey, it's Michael Creasy here with ABC Realty from besthomesinhanover.com. And in this episode, let me stop right there. I've given you my name, given me my website, given me my company. And I've also said something really magical here. I said, in this episode, do you know that this is my first video or it's my hundredth video? You don't know. But because I, word, I use that phrase in this episode, it sets up the expectation that if they like this one, there's more to come. Which now puts the monkey on your back that if you're creating the expectation, you wanna make sure that you deliver the goods. So don't try to do, oh, I'm, I'm gonna start doing video today because Michael said, I'm gonna do a video a day. Okay, let's just roll back there a bit, Gilligan. Remember, it was a three hour tour turned into a seven year run on Gilligan's Island. Let's just roll back there. Get into the habit of just trying to do one video for now. One video a week. Maybe it's Wednesdays at noon. You're going to post that video to your YouTube channel. By the way, YouTube's free. If you don't have a YouTube channel, maybe you post it to your Facebook page. But just get into the habit of creating a frequency of content. Now, the next question, Michael, you said content. What do I do? Get a pad of paper you, for you. Well, okay, I don't see any younger kids here, so you don't have to Google paper. But this is made from trees. You can look it up. And a pen. It has ink, okay? And what we used to do in the old days, Rob, Ed, you know this, we would take said pen and we would write on said paper notes. Now everybody does it on a laptop or on a tablet, Ed especially. I don't think he owns a pen. I bet if we went through his condo, we couldn't find one. Maybe a lump of coal there somewhere. My point is, in your mind, pick out who is the perfect client for you. So Rob, maybe for you, it's first time condo buyers. I'm just picking one arbitrarily. First time condo buyers. And when you meet these people, you know that there's a common set of questions that they always ask you. So what I would do is get said piece of paper with pen or quill, write down those 10 common questions that they always ask you. The other thing I would do is then as the savvy real estate professional, you know that they don't know what they don't know. I'm going to repeat that. They don't know what they don't know. So in Michael's world, when I was buying the train station, I didn't know anything about well and septic. I should have. I, I mean, I'm a realtor. You figure I would know these things. But there's a whole bunch of things about country properties I didn't know. But as somebody that trades in that commodity all the time, you know there's things they should be asking. Boundaries, surveys, well and septic, flow rates, all that stuff. So what I would do now, again, pen, paper, and hand, I would write down the 10 questions that they should be asking me. And now you've got 20 questions. So now you start off with the information sandwich. Hey, it's Rob Roland here from robroland.com at Rob Roland Realty. And in this episode, I'm going to cover the most essential thing you need to know about buying a country property. Point number one, whatever that is, wash, rinse, repeat. You now have a 20-part series. 
So that's the easiest way to start right now creating content. So let me do a quick pause. Uh, Ed, any questions? Yeah, I just unmute myself there. As a matter of fact, I gotta just make one comment. Just it's sort of funny because years ago, with my picture on my business card, I just ordered new ones. So I didn't put my picture on. I'm, I'm tired of scaring people away. That's my excuse. Anyways, I showed up at the listing appointment. I'd never met the guy before. He referred to me. And he jokingly looked at my card, looked at me and said, well, when's this guy showing up? Which was right on the nose. <laughs> okay. Anyways, he was kidding. Um, a couple of things. I'm, uh, I'm looking at my MacBook Pro as I speak to you. But now I'm looking at my screen and I have a large screen that I use because I hooked the MacBook Pro into it. But now with cameras, I was wondering, would I be better to buy a camera, stick it on top of the Samsung monitor and speak to that? Because I do a lot of listing. I, I, do, I do everything remotely, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. I, my listing appointments are done remotely. I look at the house once, put a lockbox on it, that's it. Do the photos and, and the rest of it's all done remotely. So I'm doing a Zoom or I'm using, uh, we use something called Crank Wheel, which is very similar. Um, but I'm doing the listing presentation on the screen and even the actual listing, making changes to it so they can see the changes they're making while I'm going over it. Would it be better to have a second monitor and use that instead of keeping going back and forth to the two? I think it's whatever you're comfortable with. So if you're making changes and you're constantly going to be looking at this monitor and not your MacBook, then I would probably get a webcam and put it on top. Um, it's, it's going to be a lot easier for you, obviously. Yeah. But the other thing you can do is just turn the camera off. So if you're, feature, if you're focused on uh, reviewing a contract, let's say, your listing agreement, or maybe you're going over points in an offer, they don't necessarily have to see you. If you're doing the walkthrough, um, and you're doing a virtual walkthrough, is that what you're saying, Ed? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, um, I'm not an open house guy, so I, I will make a video of the interior if I don't have one done professionally. Okay, is this going to be Facebook Live that you're doing, or are you going to record it, save it, and then do something with it later? Yeah, I, I put them on um, Vimeo, actually, and then okay. I email it to my clients from Vimeo. So we'll get into that in a moment, because, because there, there's some really cool things that there's some realtors in Ottawa that are doing with shooting video and then using Zoom to create the allure of a, a virtual Yes. Allure. What I would do is a couple things. Um, number one, as you're going through the property, uh, and I'm kind of jumping the gun here. Uh, we're going to talk about non-branded video content, yeah. non-branded content to use. So you may want to consider doing two things. You do a quick walkthrough and you just introduce yourself. Hey, it's Ed here. And nothing about your brand, your company or anything. You're, you're yeah. just doing a walkthrough. And the thing I'm going to suggest, what most realtors will do is they, they want to accentuate all the great stuff about the home. Oh, look at this marble countertop and oh, gold taps. And, you know, King Solomon himself slept in this bed. What they forget is all the things about the house that aren't perfect. Right? So the shingles are... 30 years old, the life expectancy is 15. You can see they're starting to curl. As you walk around the back of the house, you can see the east troughs. There's water leaking from the eaves. That's going to have to be replaced. You go inside the house, uh, you know, maybe there's leaky faucets, whatever that is. You want to make sure that you also draw attention to those things. And the reason is, and it's multiple. Number one, if they're watching this video, okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to share with you in a moment, they'll have to watch the video. It's different altogether. Have to versus they should. No, they'll have to watch the video. As they're watching the video, it will qualify the buyer ahead of time because if they see all these things, it's like, well, you know what? Yeah, I don't want to see this place, which is okay. Because mm -hmm. what, what, what that's doing is, number one, it's saving time for the uh, buyer's agent. Number two, it's not putting the seller out by having people that aren't qualified or are not interested in the home coming through. So non-brand, again, I don't want to like spill the beans yet, but start thinking non-branded content. So walk through, and it doesn't have to be an uber professional tour that you're paying thousands of dollars for. I, th I think those days are gone. I mean, literally, you know, here's, you know, one of uh, Michael's tools. This is a Bluetooth selfie stick, right? And it's, it's about 30 bucks. And the reason I like this thing, it's really simple to operate. I put my phone in here and now I walk around and I'm, I'm doing my video. The other thing is, I call it the flying finger of death. When you're holding your phone yeah, I know and you want to hit record, flying finger. So it's like, let's pretend this is, my finger has to come in, which you won't see right now, but let's pretend. You'll see this part 
my finger is probably coming back from the camera. Okay. So I've hit record. Now I have to stabilize the phone, you know, because I'm off here. I'm doing my video and now flying finger of death is coming in again to turn the video off. Okay. When you've got something like a Bluetooth, it's all controlled here. I just press the button and then automatically it starts recording. Automatically it stops. Now, the other thing about this particular Bluetooth selfie, it also doubles as a tripod. So now I can set this on my desk and I can be doing uh, Facebook Live. I could maybe be interviewing Rob Roland because he's a super realtor and he's sharing tips and tactics with my audience. And we have a microphone, which brings us to the next thing, but in a moment. So Rob and I can be away from the camera and here's what happens. Within arm's length, the audio is going to be good because that's where the microphone is. But as we start moving back, because we're trying to frame two of us in shot, and you can hear it here, the quality of the audio starts to disintegrate the further I move away from the source. So if this microphone, let's pretend for a moment this is my cell phone, as I'm moving away, you can hear the sound quality is yeah. not as good. Remember I said 70% of a good video is the audio. So one of the things I would consider investing in who manufactures a selfie stick? Hey, that's cool that that pops up there from Kim. Kim, what I'll do, um, I'll share links with Ed after the fact. You got one there, Ed? Yeah. I just buy these on Amazon. This one is uh, a wolf gang or something or other. Uh, and I just, it was white. And I thought that was kind of cool. They're, they're, they're black. They're white. They're about 30 bucks. Um, yeah, this one, Michael, is that I have a remote control with it too. So I can, I don't yeah, have. So same thing. Exactly. So it comes yeah. off. Yeah. You don't have to put your finger up to the phone. So point number one, selfie stick, 30 bucks. Point number next, microphone. And what I'll do, Kim, I'll send uh, Ed the link when we're done here for everything that I'm holding up here. And no, I, 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 I'm not an affiliate. This is just stuff that I've used over the years and I know what works and what doesn't. Trust me, I've got shelves of stuff that doesn't work. This, this particular lav mic, and lav mics you can find um, on Amazon as well. They're about $20. This one's a bit more expensive. It, it's actually 30 and what you have to look for, number one, I'm going to hold this really close. Hopefully you can see that. If you look at the tip of this particular lav mic, you'll see it's got three black rings to it. Three black rings. Now, when it comes to a camcorder, you'll say, well, Michael, I've already got one. Well, you'll notice it probably only has two, which means it's not meant for a mobile device. For mobile devices, it's always going to be three. And the other thing you got to be concerned about, I, uh, iPhone people, especially after I think iPhone 7, in their infinite wisdom, uh, Apple took out the separate audio jack here for whatever reason. Then they introduced this thing, a little firewire cable, which realtors have a tendency to lose. Trust me, I'm on my third one here. So you wanna make sure that you buy a couple of these and a little piece of wire is about 10 bucks. Same thing you'll find it on Amazon. And what happens is you take said cable you plug it in. Android people, you can just chime out here for a second. This is specifically uh, Apple. And now it plugs in, and now I can be doing audio. So I clip this onto my lapel here, and voila, I'm going to have exceptionally great audio. Now, the reason I, I recommend this particular one is if you ever want to interview somebody. So let's say I've got my selfie stick, and I'm pretending that the glorious day will come when all the restaurants, bars, and pubs are open again. And I'm interviewing in my neighborhood the various points of interest. I'm going to go to the best restaurant. I'm going to go to the pizza place, the dry cleaner. I'm going to do a quick one-minute interview with all those people. And that's the kind of content that people really get excited about. The other thing, too, is if you do that video for the dry cleaner, lawyer, accountant, I'll tell you, chances are they're not doing video. And if you share that video with them, they're going to put it on their social media pages. They're going to be helping promote you because you help promote them. Remember reciprocity? You did something of exceptional value that they want to now return the kindness. Okay. So anyway, getting back to the video, we have this here. I'm recording, but notice this microphone. I'm going to hold it up close. There's this thing right here. Okay. And this is specific with this thing called the iRig. What this allows me to do is I can plug another lav mic into this. So this goes into my phone. I've got one on me. I can plug another one in here and now I can have it on Rob or on my pizza guy or whoever it is. And all of it is now being recorded on my phone and it's going to be the same level and it's going to be just exceptional audio. Now, these ones are a bit more expensive. A two pack, I think is about $70, $70. And the same thing, it's called an iRig and you'll see that on Amazon as well. And Ed, I'll send you the links after. So those are the, like the basic things that I would recommend. Now, Michael, 
Do I absolutely have to get this stuff? No. I'll repeat that. Michael, do I absolutely have to get the stuff? No. Don't let this be the excuse that stops you from doing video. So I've discovered that we have reasons and we have excuses. Excuses are the visceral things that hit us right away. I know I should be eating more organic food. I don't have the time, it's too expensive. Yeah, I don't know what to do. I should probably be going to the gym more often. Or I should be working out, ah, it's too expensive, too hard to do, I don't have the time, okay. Those are the excuses. The reasons we don't do stuff, that's the stuff that's buried deep in our psyche. You know, when we were babies, we were dropped or whatever the thing is, self-esteem issues, especially when it comes to video. And that's why I was jokingly saying, I'm too fat, too white, too hair, anything with a tooth. Look, I'm follically challenged. I don't care because here's the secret. When I get on camera, my crappy video, and you may want to write this down, Bob, my crappy video will beat the one that you never do every time. My crappy video will beat the one you never do every time. And if you think about what we've been going through now the past four months now with this Corona thing, video is now the new normal. And I, I hate that expression, new normal, but that's how we're doing everything. We're doing it via Zoom. We're doing it remotely. And as we move forward, getting up, out of this, the savvy realtors now more than ever are going to be leveraging video in their marketing, in their communication styles to keep in touch with their clients, to generate new business. It's all going to be about video. And the stats are, according to Comstat, 90% of all mobile traffic, where's my phone? 90% of all mobile traffic will be video by 2021. So a year from now, 90% of everything that's happening on a cell phone will be video. So it's not a matter of you guys need to be doing video. You have to be absolutely have to be and just take it back to okay michael i'm, I'm also i'm, I'm self-conscious i don't know what to do that's okay because i'll bet the first time if you know if i show of hands anybody that's been to a gym the first time you went to a gym oh it's sweaty noisy music's blaring these big huge hairy and that, that's just the women but after <laughs> you've gone once or twice or three times you start getting familiar you start recognizing familiar faces and here's the magic you get into a routine you get into a routine and you actually start enjoying it. Video is exactly the same thing because there'll be moments you're sitting at a coffee shop and you go, oh man, I just had an idea. That's something you put on Facebook Live. No script, no nothing. And Facebook Live, if you're not doing it, oh my gosh, it's a realtor's best friend. When Ed's doing his open house today, I hope and pray that he's going to be doing something on Facebook Live. That he's going to be telling his audience today, hey, between uh, seven and eight tonight, I'm going to be at 123 Anywhere Street. I'm going to give you a surprise sneak peek of my new listing. And I know Ed's savvy enough that he's going to do that. I'm nodding his head for him, but he's going to be doing that on Facebook Live. Because what happens there, again, and squirrel, I'm off track here. On Facebook Live, you start building an audience. And what Facebook loves, absolutely loves, is Facebook Live. A, it's theirs. But two, if you create a longer video, okay, so what I'm recommending for now, you know, quick video emails under a minute, uh, content, minute to two minutes tops. But on Facebook Live, it's the wild, wild west. Because what happens, the longer your video is, the more Facebook will reward you, especially if people are liking and interacting with you. So I do something, I try to do it at least once a week. Well, let me go back a step. I'm up every morning at six and I do my power walk, it's 5K. And the halfway point, there's this bridge. And what I generally do is before I go on my walk, I read something the night before, the morning of, and it stimulates something in my brain. It's, it's like a thought or question or puzzle that I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Or maybe it's something that happened over the weekend. And as I'm doing my walk, I'm unpacking this in my brain and I'm, I'm coming up with a story. And then when I get to that bridge, and if you haven't seen any of my stories, go to Facebook, find me and, and you'll see. Like they're all over the map, inspirational, COVID stuff, whatever, but it's stuff that's pertinent and relevant. And I'll just do a Facebook live video and sometimes they're about 10 minutes. And it's like a cocktail party. And if you can imagine you're at a party, you go from room to room and Facebook Live is exactly the same way. You'll start off doing the video and there may be four or five people, maybe. But then as you start producing more content and you're doing it well, they get notified that, hey, Ed's doing a Facebook Live. People get notified, they come in, I wonder what Ed's up to. And suddenly it's not five, it's 20, it's 30 people. And the other thing is you start seeing the hearts and the thumbs come up because people are engaged and comments come on as well. And that's what Facebook loves. Now, what will happen is those same people, just like in a cocktail party, they start watching your video, maybe they're a minute, two minutes in, and they've got the attention span of a gnat, they're going to move on to something else. 
But then generally what happens a few minutes later, they come back. And that's why I like using this analogy of a cocktail party. They're circulating from room to room within Facebook. They're checking out different stuff, but then they keep coming back. So one of the, the tips to this when you're doing Facebook Live is you want to make sure occasionally you stop and acknowledge the people that are watching. Hey, Ed, thanks for tuning in. Hey, Rob, how you doing there, buddy? And then go back to your message. Because the most favorite word to anybody, the most favorite word is their name. And if you can use their name in a video, oh my gosh, that's a secret sauce to keeping them engaged. Okay. So let me do a quick pause. Uh, Ed, I see uh, uh, some chats happening here. What do we got? Um, Marg, you're muted. You look lovely, but I can't hear you and I don't do lips. <laughs> okay. so if you, there you are. Okay. Hi. <laughs> hey, how are you doing, Marg? One thing I didn't get in the beginning, I didn't understand. Uh, when you hold the phone up, as you said, okay, you said you're looking into the phone, make sure you have a smile and everything else, and you're getting ready to record the video. Okay. Let's say in a property, and you want to do like a tour, okay. right? You have to turn the camera after to show, like, what do you look at while you're doing this? You yourself looking at your face always, or you're looking at the actual property? Real, really good question, Mark. So let me ask you a question. Are, are you using an, an Apple phone or an Android? Yes, no, an Apple. Okay, so with Apple, in their infinite wisdom, and it makes no sense to me, okay, no <laughs> sense at all, that when I start recording a video and I've got it in selfie mode, so this is the front facing camera. So let, yeah. let's just, let's turn it on here quickly. And, okay, so I've got it. And if I turn this around, you can see that it's, it's looking at me, okay? So I can start recording a video, but here's where the problem starts. Apple does not give you the ability now to pause that video, let's see when I'm recording, and now it's recording. It doesn't allow me to turn the camera around because if I'm holding it now on me, it doesn't give me the ability now to turn these lenses right. on so I can do the walkthrough. Right. You're right, that's- So there's an app, and, and I'll share this app with you, and it's called, uh, Android people, again, you can just go out for a joint right now because you've already got the pause button built into your phone and you can turn it around. On um, Apple, I'm just looking for it here. Pardon me as I struggle to find it. Uh, it's called cam uh, Pro Camera. Where the heck did it go? I must have deleted. Um, what I'll do, is I'll do a quick tutorial for you guys and I'll give it to Ed and I'll show it to you. Um, but it's called Pro Camera. Or, or movie pro, I can't remember which one it is. But what it does, it gives me the ability now to pause, so I can start recording me, Mark, like you were saying, doing the introduction, and it gives me a pause button. So I can pause, and then it allows me to flip to the other lens, and now I can start walking through. And so what I would be doing is I would be giving a commentary as I walk through the home. So you don't see me necessarily. But then okay. what I can do is I would pause, and then I turn it back on me, because I want to be in and out of the movie. So here's, here's the common trap that realtors think. They think it's all about the house. And I say no, because chances are they're not going to buy that house. But if they can make a connection with me because they're watching me in the video or in the movie, then maybe I can sell them a different home. Or maybe, remember I talked about no like, and trust? Because they've been on this journey with me, maybe they're going to say, oh, I'm going to reach out to Michael now and see if there's anything else in the neighborhood. Okay, that's perfect because that's really confusing. And the, the fact that there is no turning around button is really. It's, so it's definitely. Marga, Marga, I apologize. It's usually that's right okay. here on my home screen and it's called, uh, I'll find it. It's either pro camera or, oh, there it is. What am I saying? I'm looking right at it. The, <laughs> where did you hide your sunglasses? Yeah, on my head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn this here and you can see, well, hold on. How do we do this? So right now you can see it's pointing. It's using yeah. the lenses on this side. I can flip it. Uh, where is it here? If I hit the flip button, now it's looking at you guys. Yes. And there's the record button. And if I start recording, I don't know if you can see that, but I'll hit record. Yeah, I can. Okay, now it's recording. And I'll go really close. Right there in the middle, that's the pause button. So I can pause that. And now I can turn the camera around again. Oh, I took a picture there. Hold on. I can turn the camera around. And now it's the other way around. And then if I hit record again, it's going to start recording. So what happens, let's go back a step here. When I take a, a camera, especially Apple, 
I start recording a clip. Maybe I'm in, uh, I'm outside. Let's, let's say we start outside. And then there's no pause button. I have to hit the stop button. And now I run inside the house and now I'm going to start in the kitchen. So I start recording. And then maybe, oh, you know what? I want to go to the basement. Okay, so I stop. Now I'm in the basement. So what I've done is I've created maybe five, six, ten little video clips. And now I have to take all those clips yeah, and I have to pull great. them into something like iMovie. So I have to edit yeah. that together. With this app, what it does, it, it, I'm not hitting stop. I'm hitting pause. So same thing. I'm out front of the house. Hey, it's Michael here with, you know, Banana Realty. That's a Tom Ferry line. Hey, it's Michael here, michaelcreasy.com, best homes in Etobicoke. And uh, hey, we're at 123 Anywhere Street. I'm going to give you a sneak peek. Let's go inside. I'll hit pause. Now I go inside. I hit record again. I do a couple of rooms. Pause. So what it does now is when I finally hit the stop button, not the pause button, but the stop button. Right, right. It will take all those little clips and it puts them all them together one. as one. Oh, perfect. It, yeah. It's magic. It's like there's little fairies built into the camera, so I don't have to do it. So, yeah. so you press on this app, you enter this app to take the video? Yes. And I can, okay. And what it does, it literally, Marg, it gives me more control over my camera. It's almost like a $1,500, you know, Canon camera. That's yeah. how much control it will give me of the iPhone. I can set the color. The co it, there are so many features okay. in there that you will never use. I spent the money just for the pause button and to be able to flip it. For me, that was $10 well spent. What's so what was yeah. the name finally? Yeah. Um, bear with me here a sec. So many windows, not enough stones. <laughs> it was called Movie Pro. Movie, Movie Pro. Pro. Okay. Movie Pro. Okay. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, Hugh. I hope that, that answered your question, Hugh. It was yes, called it Movie did. Pro. Thank you. What else have we got there, Ed? Um, in the chats, let's see. Um, oh boy, Manu manufacturer for selfie sticks. And uh, I think he mentioned that. Dennis Locke wanted to know, include the name of the microphone to your left. Oh, this one that I'm using here? Yeah. Um, this yeah. is a Audio Technica USB 2020. Audio Technica USB. So I plug it directly into my computer. They're about $190. What I would recommend is these ones here. Yeah, Michael, you have so many microphones. Yes, of course I do because I'm enamored by toys. This one here is called a, a Yeti, a Yeti microphone. Probably the easiest mic in the world to use. And there, there's different colors and they're smaller. It's literally plug and play. You run the cable, plug it into your computer, into your laptop, and magically it starts working. Awesome mics. They come on sale. Um, Best Buy has them, but I find Amazon will have them cheaper, you know, support. And, and then I get it usually within a day or two days. These are probably about $120 as well. Um, awesome microphones. You can't go wrong with a Blue Yeti. Audio Technica, they're a bit more pricey. It's more of a professional mic, but it's because I'm recording tutorials all the time. Mm -hmm. And your video camera. The one I'm using on right now is a Logitech C920. Logitech C920. Um, I don't even know if they still make them anymore. There's a newer one. And because of the COVID stuff, I would say hold on on buying them because they're artificially expensive right now because there's such a demand. Um, anything by Logitech is going to be good. Any of the 900 series, so 920, 930, um, same thing, plug and play. Just put it right into your computer. You're good to go. Do you get the finger of death when pausing? Uh, yes, potentially the flying finger def would be there when I hit the pause button. Nothing to do. Okay. Um, too bad Just make sure you're using the right finger and you're okay. Yeah, I'm too bad it's not a remote control for that. Yeah. Should we be walking slowly rather than at our normal speed when recording? Um, definitely. So there, there's a couple things at play here. If I'm holding the camera in my hand, and we're walking and you're walking quickly, what will happen is the camera is going to be like on a roller coaster. Now people will, for, let's go back to basics. They'll forgive a shaky video. That's why the audio is so important. If they can hear you clearly, and, and, and this kind of goes back to what Marg uh, initiated here. If I'm recording me and then I flip the camera around, I'm using this lens, <clears throat> excuse me. What happens is there's a microphone on this side of the camera. There's a microphone on this side of the camera. So when I switch back and forth, what I am doing is I'm switching from one mic to the other, and there's a distinct difference in the audio quality between one and the other. 
And that's why when you have something like this, like a lab mic plugged in, it's going to be consistently the same no matter which camera I'm using. So something to consider, even if you don't get this one, you know, with, with the ability to do uh, interviews, lab mics are about 20 bucks. You know, for 20 bucks, you can't go wrong. Just make sure it's for a mobile device and you can plug it into your phone. And confirm the name of the camera app. I think you did that. Uh, the camera app was Movie Pro. Yeah. Uh, After I do a video, what do I do with it? How do I get it on Facebook or YouTube? Well, that's pretty hard. That's, you almost have to be in front of a computer to explain that. Yeah, what I can do, maybe for that, we'll do a tutorial, Ed. Um, if it warrants and people want me to come back, if I haven't bored them to tears yeah. yet, maybe we can do something really specific. How do we shoot a video and get it into Facebook? Yeah. It's relatively simple. We're doing very well. Actually, we had 35 people join. We still have 31 here. So Yeah, but they're all probably in the kitchen right now making a sandwich or something. So. Oh, it's a Logitech thing. Well, we already did that. Logitech is a Steam 920. That's what I'm using right now. Yeah. Ed, please get Michael back. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, he's what doing are you trying to say, Mark? Okay. That, that was $5 well spent. Thanks, Mark. Do you do, do you do just a general video as opposed to a tour of a condo? or house of the neighborhood. Okay, so let's, um, let's break this down. Uh, I'll show you some examples in a moment. I, I could, let me stop. I'm trying to formulate the thought here in the best way that I possibly can. The, the class, so let's go back a step. I've been in real estate since 1989. So when I speak with you guys, it's with love and affection. I'm also a broker. So what I share with you has to be relative to real estate. Okay, so let's keep that, nothing to sell, even though I speak on stage, nothing to sell here. So when I say there's a classic mistake that realtors make, it's because there's a classic mistake that realtors make. And the first one is assuming that somebody just rolls out of bed in the morning. Let's say Rob rolls out of bed, scratches whatever he scratches, washes whatever he washes, puts on a piece of cloth, and now legally he can walk out onto the street. The next thought in his mind isn't, I'm buying a house today. It doesn't work that way. What happens first is... There is a thought process. Rob thinks the cave I'm in now is maybe too small, maybe too big. I don't like the traffic. So something starts happening, which prompts Rob to say, time to move from this cave to another. And so what happens then is, if you look at this in a logical succession of order, the first question becomes, do I still want to live in this province? Do I still want to be in Ontario? Okay, number one, province. Number two, from province, you know, what city do I want to live in? Okay, so we're in Ontario. And let's say, yeah, you know what, I want to move to Toronto. I've heard it's a really cool place. I want to move to Toronto. Okay, so we've got a city. From city, what neighborhood do you want to live in? I've heard a lot about Etobicoke. I think I want to move to Etobicoke. From Etobicoke, it's okay. Now, is there a street in particular that I'm looking for? Okay, so now I've got four different levels here of content. And where I'm going with this, the mistake is, once upon a time, we would pay a virtual tour company. And in the day, you could blow a thousand bucks on a virtual tour. You still can for the high-end homes. I'm saying, I don't think you have to do that. But let's say it's going to cost you money. Once upon a time, it cost you money. Have this beautiful virtual tour. It's a hot market. You put it up there. And what happens? The house sells. Well, what do you do with that video? Nothing. You've got to take it down because you can't market a property that is no longer for sale. So let's take the house out of the equation, for example, for a moment. If I'm a buyer and I'm moving to this area and I don't know nothing about that area, it's your job to educate me. So now take me on that tour. Number one, we talked about Etobicoke. Okay, what are the, like, the top 10 places in Etobicoke that are really cool? Show me Etobicoke. Each one of those is a separate video clip. Number two, we talked about neighborhoods in Etobicoke. Show me the neighborhoods in Etobicoke, the churches, the schools, the shopping. Let me experience what it's like to live there. And then ultimately, you can take me down the street where your listing is, and now you showcase the listing. Where I'm going with this is if I take the listing out of the, the equation for now, maybe I don't have a listing. But all those other points that I just talked about, the, ch the churches, the schools, all that stuff, that can live on YouTube forever, forever, because shopping malls don't usually go away too quickly, neither do churches and schools. And that's the kind of content when people start looking, I call it evergreen content, you can use now to drive traffic back to your website, use it for SEO. And I don't want to get into SEO and, and all that stuff yet, but just understand that there's all this other content. So let's take it one step deeper. Um, Rob, I think, still lives in a condo, condo people. 
you can do, even though you don't have a listing in that building, you can show me the lifestyle of what it's like to be in that condo. So you can do video clips of the pool, the amenities, you know, like the gym, show me the outside. Maybe it's on the waterfront. Like I used to live at Marina Del Rey. I'd see the sailboats going by. All those little video clips tell a story that I can keep using over and over again to sell a unit that I don't even have yet in Marina Del Rey. Okay. So I call that evergreen content. Start thinking about stuff that you can shoot. Another thing, and I, I know I'm going way off the path here. It's called B-roll footage, B-roll. And B-roll is you're at the park and you see, you know, a kid's playing or dogs running in this particular neighborhood. And you do a little 10 second clip of that. Okay. You're on your bicycle and the streetcars are going by. There's an ice cream vendor. You're going to do a little 10 second video of that. And what you're doing is you're creating a library of all these little video clips and it's just like a painter will choose different colors to paint his masterpiece. You can do the same thing with those video clips within your editing software. And my gosh, it's never been easier on uh, iPhone. It's iMovie, Android people. You've got one built in. There's a, a few apps I can recommend, but I can pull in those little clips. And then there's a feature in the editing app that allows me to record my voice. So now I've got the, the, the streetcars and people playing. I can now tell a story about what it's like living in that neighborhood even though I don't have a listing. Does that make sense? Ed, how are we doing so far? Ed, you're muted. Ed, you're muted. Sorry, uh, I muted myself. There you go, Sorry. okay. Um, yeah, no, um, thanks Ed, gotta run, talk soon. That was Rob, he had to go. Alice okay. said to everyone, this is great. And uh, we'd love to get you back again. Uh, you have an app that you're involved in, aren't you, Michael? I don't mind you mentioning it if you want to. I, I, I came here with love and affection, Ed. I don't want to promote anything. Next time, we'll do one specifically about video email, and I'll pimp it out all day long. I, I wanted yeah, to give you guys... Because be nice, I think it's a great app, and, and it would be worthwhile seeing. Uh, I'm recording this. So it's going to be, I missed the first three or four minutes, but the rest of it, I got it all recorded. Okay. All of you that are here, you will, uh, you'll get an email with a link to the recording once I uh, get into iMovie and <laughs> cut off the ends or something like that. So you'll get that very soon. But again, as I said, it's three or four minutes into uh, Michael talking. And uh, Michael, we'd love to have you come back again. I thought that was really great, very informative. Um, before you go, can you please show the interesting content being done from the Ottawa Realtors? Okay. Sure. Hey, so let's, let's, Ed, let's do this. I'm not in a hurry. If you're, this is up to you, Ed, you've got the button. <laughs> you uh, have the power, Ed. If you want me to stay a bit longer, I'm willing to stay a bit okay. longer. Okay. We got, let's say, I know that Asia is going to start tapering up. We've gone okay. from 35 down to 29. And I think that's a really great question. Can you cover it in, in three or four minutes? Sure. Let's do a quick speed one. And then if I come back, we'll, we'll go. Uh, yeah, that deeper. would be good. Yeah. Okay. So let's do this. I'll give you a couple examples quickly. I'm here. finding agents tire after about 45 minutes. So uh, well, it's because it's coming close to noon and, you know, the Flintstones are on. I, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the coronavirus do... count is on at noon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to miss that, do you? All right. So. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, got your screen. Okay, so let's do, you said the interesting one. And uh, ah, here it is. Okay, so let me hit this one here. Nope, that's not it. Hold on here. Uh... Where the heck? Oh, here it is. Sorry, guys. Here it is here. Okay. Done. Okay. Let me turn on the audio. So let me just pause this. So I'll play a bit of it. So what these guys have done, this is Sean Tassi and his partner. They're uh, Remax agents out of Ottawa. And first generation, what he did is uh, he would go just like you're doing tonight, Ed. You're going to your listing and he's gonna walk through and he recorded a virtual tour, but no audio, he didn't say anything, he walked through, or maybe he did. Let's go into the premise that he did because you can extract the audio out in your audio, uh, editing software. So he went through, he did his tour of the property, okay. now he's got a video. Then what he does, he goes back to the office and now he's using Zoom, like we're doing right now, 
and he plays the video in the background because you can play a video. So he's playing this. And as they're playing the video, you see him and his partner here are doing a commentary. And it's almost like in the day when Don Cherry was still allowed to walk the earth, him and uh, his cohort, uh, McLean, are doing this kind of back and forth, walking through the home. So uh, let me jump ahead here and I'll play a bit more. Huge, expansive living space. Now, this could be a formal living area and a formal dining area, or just make it all big living space and flex space, whatever you need. It's private to the back of the home. Huge windows looking at the backyard. It's just a really nice feel in there in that room. Trust me, I've been there. And it flows right into the So these two guys play well off of one another. So basically, like I'm saying, what they did, they shot a video, and now they use Zoom to get it out there to their membership. So they tell people, hey, we're gonna be doing this virtual walkthrough. So they're being respectful to their seller, they're being respectful to the buyers, and if the buyer's interested, hopefully they're gonna reach out. What they've done now, they've taken it one step further. They're telling their buyer, sorry, their, their sellers who have cell phones to do the video. So they're coaching the seller how to walk through the home. Seller does the video. They then upload that video to Dropbox. Sean then takes it down from Dropbox. He has it on his computer. And now he runs that video exactly the same as he's doing right now in Zoom. And he doesn't even have to go to the house. So for people that are uber paranoid that they don't want anybody coming into their home, now the seller's doing the video for them. And the interesting thing about that is that you can bet if the seller is now participating in the process, they're going to want to recommend the video. They're going to want, hey, you know, my friends and neighbors, look what I did. I made a video. Okay. Now, what I do, I take it one step further. Let me jump back and uh, bear with me here a sec. Um, how do I stop share? Okay, here, I'm back on here. Um, what I like to do is, let, let me pick on Ed for a sec. You know, Ed, you're living in a condo? Okay. If I, Ed, what, what's, what's the favorite, favorite thing about living in that condo? What is it about that condo that just lights you up? I don't have to cut any grass and don't have to shovel any snow. Yeah. I go and if I keep it, winter, I lock the door and I'm gone for four months. So that's what I like. So what I want to do with Ed, I'd say, Ed, that was awesome. Hold on a second here. Let's do that again. Tell me what it was. What was it about the, the condo that really excites you? Because now he is going to share a story. As realtors, by default, it's in our DNA. We're going to try to sell a listing. We can't help it. Oh, yeah. A lovely granite countertop, whatever. Right. And then you, you do video of the bathroom. Well, I don't know what realtors in their fixation of the toilet seat is, but I've seen so many toilets in my life. I, I, I can't stand it anymore. Stop taking pictures of the toilet. So my point is that if I do it, I'm going to do a commentary like a professional realtor walking through. But if I interview the homeowner, if I interview the homeowner, they're going to be sharing on an emotional level what it is about that home that they like. So instead of a condo, maybe I ask Marg, Marg, what, what's your favorite room in the house? And she says, oh, Michael, you know, we have this den here with the fireplace and we just absolutely love the fire. Oh, what is it about the fireplace that you love so much? Oh, during the winter, the kids will all sit around and we have pizza. And so now she's unpacking this story. That is solid gold. That's the video that I want to capture. And the reason is the potential buyer in all likelihood will buy for the same reasons that Marg bought when they bought that home. And they're hitting on an emotional level that I can't touch because I don't live there. I don't know the home as intimately and I haven't experienced the same things that Marg and her family has. It's completely different. And then the other part of this is when I use that in my virtual tour, which is coming from the seller, right? I'm still in it, but the seller's there too. It's, it's more of a story. Two, it's going to pull in the buyers more. Three, you can bet, as I said earlier, that the seller is now going to share this video because they're in a movie. They're going to share it with everybody they know. All their friends, their family, coworkers, anybody with the pulse is going to see this video. They're going to share the link, which is going to help me and my brand because it's promoting me as their realtor. And then you can bet what's going to happen is a certain bunch of them are going to say, well, how come my agent didn't do this? Well, you should call Michael. Where do we find all these videos, Michael, uh, that you're doing or uh, like tutorials and stuff? Are they on Facebook? Um, I'm putting, the, actually, Mark, you, you've probably heard that expression, the shoemaker and his kids. You know, the shoemaker's kids are all running around with no shoes. Yes. He's busy making them for everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, that's me. Yeah, I, I suffer from the same thing. I'm actually putting together a course right now that will walk you through all the basics of getting started, getting over the fear, and then we're going to jump into actually doing the editing. How do I take a movie, put it together, and all that stuff. So I'm working on it. If you're interested, let me know. I am. 
very so much. That, so. That'll be more of a poke in the ass to get me to actually do it. Mike. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, and make sure <laughs> like we're friending. Me, you need the prod. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, I need yeah a big big one. Um, <laughs> friend me on Facebook, and you'll see the videos that I do there. Make sure you friend me, and okay. uh, and then remind me from time to time. Michael, you said this is what you're going to do, and then I'll follow. Okay. Through. Perfect. Well, Thank you so much. We got, we got to wrap it up. Absolutely great. I think everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you, Ed. That was great. Thanks, guys. Love, Pleasure for being here. Love to have you back again. And uh, and maybe next time, bring up that piece of software that I know you're involved in. I, I think it's great and uh, worthwhile sharing, especially an iPhone. So anyways, everybody, thanks for coming. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's being recorded. And uh, I'm going to stop the recording right now. One, two, three.